Hello for everybody. Here we are with Let's Talk. I'm Elena and I have my favorite friend, Mark. Do I have Hi, to Elena. tell do I have to tell you last name? No, you don't have to. Okay. We'll keep You're very they can look it up on Google places or something. Thank you for coming on this beautiful Sunday. My pleasure, Elena. Always good to see you. What do we do uh, usually with friends? Like everybody else, we get together and we chat, we discuss something interesting to us. So you're welcome to be a part of our conversation because we have a lot to talk with Mark because we know each other for a long, long time. And the um, most important topic what people usually discuss, we gossip, right? But we're not going to do that. Yeah, because we are more interested about relationships because it's everywhere with family between husband and wife between children and family at work so we discuss about only relationships between people how do we interact um, why do we do that because we love that that's all because we're humans Okay, anyway, last time I remember we were talking about some, your opinion, why guys, for example, mm -hmm. act in a certain way with women. Because I know you're a professional and I like I'm your opinion. Guy. Yes, you're a professional. <laughs> <All> my life. <laughs> I know how women follow you. I know how they look at you. And I think they... You've been spying on me? For sure, yes. I think I closed down my Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So, so tell me, how do women follow me? How do women uh, look at me? What, 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 are you, what are you seeing that you want uh, answers to? What are your questions? Oh, a lot of questions I have for myself and for people who I usually talk to mm -hmm. because they're asking me my opinion because there is no correct recipe on anything. Mm -hmm. Even those psychologists, you know that because everybody has certain situation. Totally agree. Everything, so, everything's different and that's why many things are, uh, I think people that read too much that's relationship right. magazines or study what a psychologist might say, uh, it doesn't work because it's everything in the moment. And that's right, I agree with that. But nobody is a cookie cutter, no man, no woman is a cookie cutter and this is what they tend to do, I think even on relationship shows and uh, I never approach relationship where we see each other at events a lot with a preconceived idea uh, for example let's go closer to the certain example we're gonna name names so be interesting <laughs> Ooh. okay what about when people misunderstand each other it is a very common yes. in relationship between men and women well, so how to overcome that and and should you explain yourself or what should you do there's a couple questions here. I think the minute you start to explain yourself, you're going to lose the other person. Because very rarely, especially if you've only known each other a brief period of time, does the other person really care why you did something right or why you did something wrong. Because they always have their own opinion. So, uh, the best you can be is who you are. And if somebody likes you, that's one thing. If they don't like you, you know, well, you want them to, but doesn't always work out that way. What about yourself. somebody who pretend, or maybe he's or she is uh, sincere about feelings, and suddenly uh, something happened, and and person doesn't trust anymore. So, and another person tried to overcome that misunderstanding and try explain themselves. So, what do you think to do? There's a lot of that out there. A lot of people, both men and women, throughout their lives, have been hurt. Yeah. But I, you know, I was thinking about this earlier about what, what, what's going to come up and what we're going to say. Um, it's sort of like the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. So if you've been hurt, I think you have to be willing to be hurt again. You can't go into any relationship, I don't think, I don't think you can go into life worrying about what happened before. You have to be in the moment and I think you have to create the future that you want to create as you're there with no regard to the past. Because who you're in front of, they were different yesterday. And like you said about arguments or misunderstandings, 
Well, maybe they just had, who knows, a bad call, a traffic accident, so they're in front of you in a different situation than who they might be under normal circumstances. So you might ask, or you might, I think that you observe honestly. Don't explain, you, you observe honestly, like, you seem to be upset. What's it about? And ask. And they may say, I don't want to talk. I says, well, I can understand that, but something's happening right now that, you know, you're not quite here. Maybe that's not the right thing to say. But you want to open up the discussion if you see something that's out of the ordinary. And at least let the other person know that you're observing it. And then they can deal with it. But most people, I think, are in denial. They're not only in denial about their past, but they're in denial about what's happening right then and there because of their past. And I think, well, from a man's point of view, I see that a lot in women. I, they, they, I, can, I can observe them being one way in other situations and then a different way uh, with me or maybe with another person. And I'm going, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> this, is, this is either an act or the, and, and I've said this actually to women, I says, it's not okay to lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. It just isn't because then everything you out there in, in public is, is representing a lie. I think uh, when people have kind of situation, mm -hmm. uh, it is a lesson for both of them, for sure. But most of the lesson get person who will be most pissed off. You know, the more you get lose yourself, you know, you want to kind of to be angry or you want to show. Yeah, that's right. This is the most needed lesson, especially for that type of uh, that part will, of the that party. That will ruin the rest of your life. Anger no, no, of revenge. course, of course. That's it's why you have to deal. It's fun, but you have it's to. Fun. <laughs> it's like, you have, you have to. Yes. It's sort of like, you know, I do martial arts, and so if you get hit, you can't cry about it. You can't get angry. Do you hit back? Yeah, you have. To, sometimes you have to hit back or defend. But what I'm in this in this particular aspect of hitting back, that's going on with your plan. It's not hitting back to destroy the other person necessarily. What I, the analogy I was trying to Just to, to make show that you can defend you yourself, right? If you get injured in the past, no. If you get a different type of analogy, if you get injured in the past, you don't carry it on to the future. You have to carry on with a game plan, as if nothing happened. You can't mm -hmm. be thinking about the hit. You can't be hesitating in life that something might happen again. Otherwise, you've lost the fight for your own I future. agree with you, yeah. You have, to, you have to be in the moment of what you're trying to create. You have to carry out your plan against the opposition of life. But you can't carry it into it, anger. I don't think. I don't yeah, know. by the way, uh, you comment on my um, comment on the Facebook uh, Which one? People wants to do you. Uh, people want you to do well, but not that well. Oh yeah. What did you say? I, I said sort of like just forget about it, prosper. <laughs> just go and thrive, right? Yeah, that's it. You know, the best <laughs> the best revenge is to prosper, and, and you have to carry out your plans. And the same thing even with relationships. If you're carrying into a relationship, even dating or going out, the misery of the past. It's not the other person's fault. That's right. You shouldn't even bring it into the game. Yes, but it is so difficult for people to understand it's, that. It's very difficult. They're just going on and on and on. They're reading the damn wrong books and watching the wrong mm -hmm. television shows. What is, what is out there, for, in my mind, for what makes a good relationship? I think what's in television and what's in books is all bullshit. I mean, I... I, 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 I agree, I read. I but not all of them. Some no, of them. Most, of, the most of it is. But yeah. this, this is typically what they're allowing to sink into their own life as advice, whether they're reading Cosmic By the way, why do you think that kind of information, I think it's toxic and disturbing and misleading, mm -hmm. why it is so available and convenient for minds? Because there's a group of people out there called merchants of chaos. They don't want people to succeed. That's just what we talked about in many newspapers and editors and things like that they get the thrill of the readership through bad news or through rumors. So you believe in that? Yeah, I do. I, I do feel that the majority of the press, I mean, you take a look at any of the news, the news is really made to keep people in fear. 
and, and that's how you can control people through fear. It's not through creativity. You can't control a creative mind. Of course. Unless you really... Because you're open it. completely. Yeah. Creative person will uh, will accept Elie Fera like, oh, it is a marvelous, right? They should. It's open. <laughs> and, it's not that, and the more creative you are, sometimes the more uh, negative people draw into you. You can just probably in music see most of it. But it can be in relationships. I mean, you can... Jim Morrison adores Jimi Hendrix, Michael Jackson. Sooner or later, the more creative they are, the, the negative people come in and try to take them out. Elvis Presley is another one, Janis Joplin. So if you allow these toxic people in your lives, even with relationships, or you carry them forward into a relationship when you're dating or you're just going out to meet people, you're doomed. You know, uh, another observation, that people who go into from one toxic relationship to another one, it's like, you know, drug addict person mm -hmm. who just needs to have just have enough that toxic which is excites them well, so you cannot judge saying. them Some, yeah, so sooner or later or they will stop to have that consuming that toxic or they will continue on well i think you have to judge everything in life that's another thing that i don't like is politically correct crap that's just somebody else's mind trying to control your mind every moment of life is a judgment also known as a decision so the decision part is the judgment part. You're, ju you're making a judgment. Yeah, the thing sort is, of, yeah. Mm -hmm. That sort of, you are. The judge goes up there and says guilty or not guilty. It's a judgment mm -hmm. based upon whatever facts and how he assimilates them. And as, as an individual on a dating type of thing, you can say, well, am I living in the past and making it her fault? Or is this somebody new in front of me? Can I just like wipe the slate clean? and figure it out from there, what I like and what I don't like. Tell me, why did you divorce? Ah, there's no you have such no a wonderful it, family. It's, I do, I do. It's, it's no simple reason. I, I think in, in my mind, and it's just my opinion, it's exactly what we talked about. And I had talked to her about it a number of times. She got involved with certain friends that were all divorced. She loved horses. And so she started horseback riding. And women will love their horse better than their man. That's a mistake. It's a mistake, <laughs> but it's a fact. I know some of the queen yeah. but most used to love that much yeah. that substitute literally man well, with that's, horse. That's what happens. And, and so the, most of the women that owned horses were divorced and they, they, to get away or to get their peace of mind from their husband rather than solving the problem, would go horseback riding. And I would, I would warn her, I says, your friends are all divorced and they're going to give you justifications as to why their life is working but their life is a divorce life, and you're going to start falling for that shit. And so this I is true. Asked, I asked her a couple of months, she said, I said well, yeah, if you got to go, you got to go. I don't want anyone around me that doesn't want me. I'm not into drama, and I'm not into toxic. So relations. you couldn't join together, and you couldn't go together. There was the nothing I could do to convince her that my viewpoint was, let's say, sane or proper for the future. I had told her that in, uh, you know, in my family, um, that between my uncles and my grandfather and my parents, typically what, mar what ended a marriage was death. It wasn't yes, somebody's that's opinion. Right. Yeah. And I said, listen, I have a thousand years of marriage in my family lineage, and uh, your parents were divorced after about you know, maybe 10. So I have a different viewpoint on things. Yeah. If you want to go with your viewpoint, you're going to get what was gotten before and I handed see. down to you. It's almost like a virus. Yes, I see. You inherited stability and she inherited as a normal situation, divorce situation. A lot of drama, a lot of yes. divorce. And it's not to say, you know, and, and so it's like uh, unable to work things out. I'm not going to get too, per too much more personal about it, but... We, we would go and we would talk to people and they would, they would agree with me and she would literally say to these people, he's hypnotizing you, you just don't understand what a good, you know, debater he is, he's hypnotizing you, and it, but it'd be, literally tens of people would tell her the same thing, you know, you ought to listen to him. Oh, no, he, he's just convincing you, you just don't know what's happening. So one day, it's, uh, I'm off lecturing and I call home and uh, one of my kids answered the phone, she said, better not come home, your mom's moving, I said, well, tell her to drive safe. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> what can you tell? That's right. What can you say? You know? Should I help you to pack your luggage? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, I'm not going to waste my time helping her pack. <laughs> Yes, yes. You know, and per when a person like puts something in their head, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what, they will stick to that no matter what. Pretty much so. When people see demons, you can't convince them that there's no demons. That's what yeah. they see. Yeah. The, the people do have to see for themselves. But this is why you have to watch who's giving you the advice, what advice are you following. If, if you follow one path, again, we talked about decisions or judgments, most people have a number of factors going through their mind. In fact, yesterday I was just talking with a woman that uh, my, boy, uh, my boyfriend uh, is not sure whether she should be with me or not. And she's crying in my car. What should I do? What should I do? Get rid of him. <laughs> she goes, well, what do you mean? I said, well, throw this you, away. Yeah, you like yourself, don't you? Yeah, I really do. And you think yourself is a good person, don't you? Yeah. Well, this guy's doubting that you're a good person and you have anything to do with his future. How long do you want to keep him around? And I would say the same thing to my kids, and I said to her too, I says, listen, it's like a parking spot. I would tell yes. my daughters, there's this guy in your parking spot, and as long as he's there, a better car can't get in. This is exactly <laughs> what I say, so that's empty, right. Empty out the spot, see who yes. shows up, make a de decision. Sometimes somebody's going to show up in that spot, and you're going to have to have the toilet bastard away. It's just not the right car. But you've got to keep it open for the right particular person. And if that person has any doubts, get him out until he's ready to make a decision. I says, it's going to be hard. I love yeah. your thinking. You know what? Thank you, <laughs> wife, that you moved out from the space. <laughs> the parking space is ready. I went back to my hometown of Rochester, New York, a few months ago this summer and went out with some people I've known since high school. And one of them came up to me and says, how do you, you seem so happy out there in California, how do you do it? I said, well, basically, I think life has two questions. I like to keep things simple. One is, one question is, what do I want? And the other one is, how do I get it? And anything that, you anything know, second that one, those second things, second one, it doesn't matter, matter, by the way. Only one question, what do I want? Well, then you That's have to it. decide how you want, no. There, there's you don't a, think about how. How do I get it? Yeah, you do have to think. It's, no. called, the, it's called the plan. You can create it. You can create it. You can just be open to allowing that to come into your life. But it's, again, it still comes down to a decision. That in front of me that yes. just came in. Because as again, we said earlier about many very famous people, very creative people, other things will come into your life that yeah. you may not be aware you're creating until you make a judgment about it. So it does have to de define what your goals are for yourself, whether it's a marriage, boyfriend, the night out, okay? And then how do I get it? And that, that again happens with dating, I mean, whether it's a guy or a girl. A guy might be going out and say, you know, well, I want to get laid tonight. Well, that's, that's what he wants. Now the question is how do I get it? The girl can have the same question too. It's simple. I'm just thinking out. about something. <laughs> yeah, you ought to let me in on those thoughts. Let, <laughs> let the people in on your thoughts here. <laughs> yes, it's reminding me of something. <laughs> and you see, you see it all the time. And then when there's, yeah. when there's people have doubt about what they want or how they're going to get it, that's where all the drama comes in. Because they can't decide. That's what doubt is. And here another question will be, and we want to talk about how people deal with doubting. And actually, they doubt in themselves or they doubt in the situation and why they're doing that. So next video will be about that. If you like what you see, if you like what you hear, let us know, please. Bye-bye. Using it around. So what I'm trying to say is that the fact that you have a flat foot, a normal, a normal arch foot, or I wouldn't even call it a normal arch.